Coming up on this HodgePodge episode, I'll be reviewing The Falcon and the Winter Soldier Season 1, Episode 1, The Walking Dead Season 10, Episode 20, 2014's Justice League War, and 2020's Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. This is Headphones Neil Review. A. V. N. It's Headphones Neil! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here with a kind of episode that I haven't done for a while now, just mostly because I've had enough time to cover um, reviews on their own, but just because of recent um, releases and things I've been working on, I watched a bunch of stuff but didn't have a chance to record them on individually, so um, for this episode... Um, I thought I would bulk up and do a hodgepodge episode for a few different micro reviews for shows that I've been watching. Um, just because I want to say that, that the Snyder cut of Justice League at four hours took a bunch of time to get through. And then I recently started playing the MMORPG Star Wars The Old Republic. So um, playing that and getting used to that game and recording the gameplay for that. Um, kind of threw off the micro reviews that I usually do. So for this review, I wanted to start with the season premiere for um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, there wasn't really much to say. It was a good start to um, the season to, to bring us into what we kind of can expect in the show. Kind of like what we did with WandaVision, but in this show I kind of liked it a little bit more just because the environment was along the lines of like a old spy thrillers. It kind of brings back um, Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Um, so, but then it also it deals in the aftermath of the blip, um, the loss of Captain America and Steve Rogers, and where all the characters are at. So we have the Falcon, um, getting used to family life, um, not necessarily, um, being re fully reintegrated with his family and having to deal with the family life. So, um, a good progression there and just the downfall or the trials and tribulations of not necessarily getting everything that he's wanted but kind of a lot of things of along the lines of not everything is gonna be as easy or smooth as he expects and just because a superhero does or just because he is a superhero does not mean that he, um, things are gonna go his way so I liked that whole story arc and then on the Winter Soldier aspect of it, I liked the idea that we now see um, Bucky in therapy. So even though um, T'Challa and the Wakandans were able to repair his mind, he's still dealing with nightmares and the aftermath of being the Winter Soldier and having dealt with the programming and doing things that went against his basically being programmed to do something versus his personality and wanting to help people so um all in all a good start to the season so i actually am i actually can't wait to see more of the season and watch this week to week to see where they go see how um falcon and winter soldier team up and what they do with the season um, overall and tie it into the MCU as a whole. But this is basically just, or as far as I can tell right now, this is one of those things where they are kind of starting with the aftermath of where all the different um, characters are at, how they're dealing with the blip and the aftermath of their lives and their families and being gone for five years. So uh, with that being said, I'll jump into The Walking Dead Season 10 Episode 20 Splinter. So in this um, episode, we have Eugene, Ezekiel, Yumiko, and Princess being captured by an unknown group that looks like they're um, uh, dressed up as stormtroopers and having to deal with these guys. Um, it mostly dealt with. It was mostly from Princess's point of view that she was being held captive. She has what it looked like to be claustrophobia, but um, 
basically she has an overactive mind, so dealing with that and then escaping and talking with um, Yumiko, Eugene, then Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel going crazy on that one guy who was um, that came to visit them. Um, and in general, a weird episode, but an interesting thing to see that we have a group that's built a society they're ultra secretive we don't know what's going on what why they're doing what they're doing why they're asking all these different questions and overall what is going on so we'll see how they this ties into the next couple of episodes in the season um if they give stuff up if um these guys are true to their word maybe they want to keep their location secret or something along those lines but of the past three episodes i want to say this was probably the most intriguing with dealing with the aftermath of the whisper with the whispers and then dealing with a new unknown group as our existing group is out looking for resources um so with that i'm going to jump into a couple of justice league movies that i saw i watched on hbo max and that's as i mentioned the 2014 film justice league war and the 2020 film justice league dark book up or justice league dark apocalypse war so these are a couple of different takes on the dark side attack on earth um the first dealing most directly with the mother boxes and dark side directly attacking earth um taking superman to try and convert his mind into working for him and the second one dealing with a more offensive version by the justice league to take on dark side but because he has spies and hidden cameras on earth he already knows he's already expecting that attack he takes out most of the justice league um, takes away Superman's powers by injecting him with like the liquid kryptonite and converting Batman's mind rather than Superman's mind to doing his bidding and having an inside look at how Earth operates. So overall, both films were good in their own ways and provide a uh, way that we could... Um, or provide an interesting story of what we could see in a Justice League 2 and it deals mostly directly with the Flash and flat and his Flashpoint paradox so having that film come out I think in the next year or two if, if memory serves um, would provide an interesting stopover as far as bridging Justice League and Justice League 2 which I think would set up Justice League 2 nicely as far as how um, Darkseid made it to Earth and how he pro reprogrammed um, Batman or sorry Superman's mind. If the Superman animated series is any indication we could technically even have um, Desaad making it to Earth bringing Superman or based on that animated series that kind of deals with the second half of a, what, what, what could be considered a full-length film so the first half would be Darkseid and or Desaad coming to Earth kidnapping Superman and reprogramming him and making him war for Darkseid and ultimately causing Earth to lose faith in him. And then the second half would be um, the rest of the Justice League working together to um, overcome Darkseid and defeat him, send him back into a random point, place in the galaxy into space and freeze him or back to Apocalypse. And then recovering Superman's mind and dealing with the aftermath of him attacking Earth and losing and Earth losing um, confidence in him. So um, things like that all generally all hinge on the probably the success of the Flash and potentially the Batman um, film with Robert Pattinson um, with both films which are currently slated to release in 2022 so um, in my opinion it seems like the once the Flashpoint Paradox hits the Justice League 2 film um, would basically be Darkseid coming to Earth with Desaad um, they could potentially have Granny and the rest of her crew, but that, I think, would not really play over well. That works fine in animated series, but not in the um, in a live-action film. But that's just me. They could um, theoretically um, pull it off. But to keep it simple, with Darkseid and Desaad reprogram Superman's mind to take on Earth... Um, and split off the Justice League where Batman 
boards the ship to take on Superman and the rest of the Justice League takes on Darkseid to either open a portal via the Mother Box and send, and do what they did at the end of Justice League 1 in the Snyder Cut and send Darkseid back to Apocalypse or um, Cyborg reprograms the Mother Box to send him somewhere else. So in any case, it's something that could be done and of course it would hinge on um, the Flash and the Batman. Because the Batman takes place, place in the past, I guess, before Justice League, it's, I doubt that would tie in directly, but I could see the Flash setting up the Flashpoint Paradox and um, setting up Darkseid's invasion of Earth via, the, via his armada as we saw in the epilogue for Justice League. So. A couple of different potentials there so I'm kind of curious to see how they pull it off or if that all is a part of um, what DC is planning for the DCU but if I in my opinion I think they should keep um, Snyder in the loop for or keep him as the director for Justice League 2 whether the film is two hours or four hours 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 it doesn't bother that's all um side information to me but i could see how they said i could see with his vision that they could potentially release it as a good movie and have a good film of the justice league versus dark side um in the future um versus what we got it with the original justice league and being delayed in that vision so that's all there is for this particular review i wanted to get kind of those reviews out just as a um bonus hodgepodge episode for everybody normally i probably would have done it all as a patron bonus but um, just because i'm bulking up i'm releasing it for everybody but with that being said if you want to get in touch with me provide your feedback uh, comments or anything like that then you can find me on uh, twitter at patel n01 the website is um patel n01.com for past episodes uh, subscription links um, supporting the show and all that good stuff and of course you can get bonus content access to upcoming episodes and all that good stuff on the patreon at patreon.com slash patel in zero one but thanks for tuning into this particular episode and until next time